Interfaces and abstract classes help to overcome certain programming hurdles, such as code duplication and coupling. When do we use them? How? And when do we select one over the other? In this video, my goal is not only to explain what these concepts are, but also to provide you with practical examples that will demystify them. We'll take a closer look at when to use one of these concepts over the other in a real-world interactive example created in the Unity game engine. My hope is that, by the end of this video, these concepts will fall into place and you'll feel more confident about their application. Doing research on concepts like inheritance, abstract classes, interfaces, and key concepts such as polymorphism, encapsulation, and decoupling in code can be daunting. Even seemingly clear examples, like baking pizzas, can feel abstract when learning these topics. Interfaces in particular might seem alien until you've tried them. One of the best ways to understand is not just to read or see examples, but to face an actual problem and to find a solution. So let's examine a problem you might encounter while programming. Let's delve into a simple pseudocode example to understand inheritance and interfaces. The principles discussed in this video are not language-specific or unique to game development. They apply to most, if not all, object-oriented programming languages. Picture this. We're in the process of creating a tablet app designed for children. In this app, kids can interact with various animals by clicking on them to learn more about each creature, hear the sounds that they make, and see those sounds displayed as text. Somewhere in the code, we will likely need to check what animal is being pointed at, or what animal we need to fetch. Maybe you will end up with something like this. Now this is just an example. This is written in pseudocode. Take it with a grain of salt. We are seeing if the current animal is a cat. Of course, there are more options than just a cat. So it turns into something like this. And if you couldn't before, now you can see the issue. Because there are plenty of animals in the sea, and soon, as more animals are added, it will look like this. This will become entirely unreadable. We could create a class called cat. Now we have to do this for every single animal, and still check which animal we are actually pointing at. Also, we have to remember the name for that function, and then print the unique string. So, we have at least two issues here. One is that we don't care what animal it is. As long as it can make a sound, we want it to do that. Another problem is sharing common functionality. All animals make sounds, and since we are lazy programmers, you know, in a good way, we would like to create that functionality once and have it work for all of the animals, even new ones that we create after the fact. Inheritance and interfaces can both solve these problems. Our first solution is inheritance. We've created an animal class that can make sounds and display text. Now we mark this class as abstract. Being abstract means that the animal class itself cannot be instantiated. It is not a tangible thing. A cat can be created, but an animal is just an idea. Thus it's abstract. You don't have to mark it as abstract, but it makes it much clearer what the purpose of the animal class is. Next we will make our make sound function virtual. Virtual means that it can be overridden in the inheriting classes. The cat can take this make sound function and replace what the sound is, thus letting all animals use this function, but still be unique. Each individual animal inherits these properties, allowing them to create unique sounds. This approach makes our code structured and easier to manage. Polymorphism is a significant benefit, allowing us to treat animal classes as instances of the animal base class. The base class, or superclass, is typically abstract. Abstract classes are a specific type of class. In object-oriented programming, they serve as templates or blueprints for other classes. Abstract classes may include abstract methods, which have some good uses, even in this code right now. But I will discuss this further later on in the video, since it complicates things right now. Abstract classes are often used when you want to define a common interface and some common behavior for a group of related classes. These inheriting classes are typically called subclasses. So we have superclasses, or base classes, and the subclasses inheriting from them. You may have multiple classes inherit from the same abstract class, each providing its own unique implementation of the functions that they inherit. We want to be able to instantiate a cat, but we don't want to instantiate an abstract animal. On the other hand, we have interfaces. Each animal could implement an iAnimal interface with a function for making a sound. Interfaces offer a lightweight solution compared to inheritance, but have some limitations, such as the inability to inherit variables. An interface defines a contract of methods that a class must implement. Unlike classes, interfaces cannot be instantiated, and they don't provide any implementation for methods. They serve as blueprints. They are the IKEA manual for behavior. Classes that implement an interface promise to provide the defined functionality, ensuring that they can be used interchangeably. Interfaces consist of method signatures. 
These method signatures outline what functionality the implementing classes must offer. In many programming languages, such as Java and C-sharp, a class can implement multiple interfaces. This feature allows a class to inherit behavior from multiple sources. Interfaces are often used to standardize the behavior of classes. Multiple classes can implement the same interface, ensuring that they all offer the same set of methods, even if they have different internal implementations. The difference, then, between inheritance and interfaces is often explained as is a and has a. Animals are animals. A cat is an animal, suggesting a close relationship. A cat also has a sound, so both implementations work, and the choice depends on the similarity and shared functionality between the classes. Inheritance is suitable when classes are closely related and share common functionality and data, while interfaces are ideal when dissimilar classes share common functionality. Our previous example is clearly a good case for inheritance, as animals are very similar and all need to do the same things. It is not a good fit for an interface, even though it would work. Both solutions offer us polymorphism. Polymorphism allows us to be non-specific when typing code. We don't have to specify exactly what we're looking for. An example of this would be overloaded methods and functions. Two overloaded methods could share the same name. The compiler would figure out which one to use, as they were being called. Polymorphism allows the appropriate method to be executed at runtime, based on the given signature, if we use integers as parameters or doubles. More significantly, it allows us to treat our animal classes as instances of the animal base class. Instead of being completely specific, like a cat is a new cat, we can be non-specific and instantiate it as an animal. The result will be the same. Let's take a look at our second example. In the game, where we use guns to shoot objects, we have a group of guns and a group of targets. Guns can shoot and reload and share many similarities. Targets on the left are not similar, but can all be shot and have a reaction to it. Which ones do you think use inheritance? And which ones do you think implement an interface? Our guns, of course, use inheritance, derived from a gun base class. They inherit methods and variables for proper functioning. In contrast, our diverse targets use interfaces, sharing the common behavior of being shootable while being distinct in all other aspects. They don't share any other similarities. So let's dive into how this scene operates. Take a look at our arsenal here. We've got a pistol, a shotgun, and a machine gun, each with its own script. Now here's the catch. Each script is almost empty. Why? Well, they all inherit from a common base class, the gun class. All of the firing, cooldowns, and even reloading are handled in the base class. Let me show you. This class encapsulates the generic implementation of a gun. Now you might wonder, why bother with separate scripts if they all do the same thing? Good question. In Unity, you could use scriptable objects to carry the data and skip inheritance. But imagine if each gun had some unique behavior that could be crammed into the base class. For instance, the machine gun, for example, overheats the more you fire. As you can see, it already does. Adding overheating to the gun class makes no sense if no other gun uses it. The shotgun might knock you back with a powerful kick. And the pistol could have features like a laser sight or a toggleable silencer. Suddenly, having distinct classes becomes quite beneficial. Let's zoom out and look at our targets again. We could of course have our targets be subclasses to a superclass, but the superclass would have a single function, and it would be the only similarity between the subclasses. This would be a waste. The enemy probably needs to do a bunch of other stuff, like pathfinding, attacking and such. The gong only has a single function, which is to make a sound as it's being shot. None of this could be specified in the superclass if they don't all share it. The gong doesn't need pathfinding stuff, and vice versa. They only share this one thing in common, getting hit, and thus an interface that ensures you have that functionality is a perfect choice. Another boon here is one I mentioned earlier, in that an interface hides the implementation from a calling class. Notice how our bullet has no idea what they're hitting. They don't know, and they don't care. They simply call an interface. Through polymorphism, they are calling whatever is using that interface, which happens to be one of our targets. These targets can then implement their own response to being hit or not do anything at all. It's up to each target. 
Thus, what happens to the target is entirely hidden from the bullet. The bullet has no idea what's going to happen to the target. Some languages allow for multi-inheritance, like C++, inheriting from multiple classes. Most other languages only allow a class to inherit from one other, but you can usually inherit from any number of interfaces. This is because an interface typically encapsulates a single behavior, like I shootable that lets an atom get hit by a bullet. A barrel, like the one in our little project here, could also be something that the player interacts with, drinks from, picks up, explodes, or any other number of things. If many objects share these similarities, we could create an interface for each one, and the barrel would then inherit from multiple interfaces, one for each behavior. A barrel that can be either shot or picked up and thrown has very little in common with something like an enemy. But maybe both can be shot, and both can be picked up. Something I briefly mentioned earlier were abstract methods or functions. Abstract classes may include abstract methods which are declared but have no implementation in the abstract class. Subclasses must provide concrete implementations for these abstract methods. That is, the superclass declares the method, but then the subclass has to actually write the code. They act very similarly to an interface, except only inheriting subclasses inherits them. It's good for enforcing some function onto all the subclasses. You're basically saying any child class must give their own version of this method. A virtual function may be implemented while an abstract method must be implemented. Now, this doesn't have any real use with our guns here, though it might have a use case in our first example with the animals. You see, all of the animals make sounds. They have to. Each animal could be clicked and make a sound, remember? Thus, instead of a virtual function, it could be an abstract one, because they have to have that function. All subclasses would need to have their own implementations, but they already did. They were already unique. Each sound is unique, and so an abstract make sound method would make sense here. In conclusion, both inheritance and interfaces have their strengths and weaknesses. The choice depends on the specific needs and requirements of your project. Use inheritance when objects are similar and share methods and data. Use interfaces when dissimilar objects share common functionality. Thank you for joining me in today's video, and thank you for staying until the end. I've been working on a starter template project in Godot for the last few weeks or so. Unfortunately, I only have a few hours per week to spend on it, so it's been rather slow. I plan to release it alongside an explanatory video following the Godot 4.2 release. Anyway, I hope you've gained some valuable insights. If you have any criticisms or questions, please let me know, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you. Uh -huh.